Well, good evening and uh, and welcome. Today is June 14th, 2022. Welcome and thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, we're here in person at Tropical Acres, and of course, we're also streaming live on Zoom to uh, to the rest of our members. And I'd like to introduce our speaker, president of uh, 2020 Innovations, and he has over 30 years experience in innovation and operations. He has led efforts in multiple industries and across sectors. He serves as the current COO of the International Association of Innovation Professionals and is vice chairman of the U.S. Technical Advisory Group for TC279 Innovation Management, which is uh, developing the, the new uh, standard uh, ISO 56000, which is the innovation management stand system. And uh, Rick has been the, uh, is the recent author of the recent book, uh, Total Innovative Management Excellence, The Future of Innovation. He's co-authored The Framework of Innovation, and he has also authored Total Quality in Purchasing and Supplier Management, which is a, uh, mm -hmm. a textbook. He is a 56, ISO 56002 lead auditor black belt. He's certified innovation professional, a CPI, certified manager of innovation, Lean Six Sigma master belt, and a certified purchasing manager. He has served as an examiner for Baldridge and also examiner for the uh, Florida Sterling Council. His topic tonight is the measurement trick, wrangling alligators, that's a before and after picture. <laughs> so thanks, welcome Rick, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. So the measurement trick, uh, I guess we're gonna start with that. And yes, wrangling alligators is only because uh, it's it's a very difficult topic, not just to explain it, but actually to to, to use it, to, to determine what it is that you want to measure, when you want to measure, you know, on interpreting it and so forth. So measuring, and especially measuring innovation, you can measure innovation, right? I mean, that's that's not very easy. Well, the uh, the ISO team is developing in 56,008 a whole standard on measuring innovation, specifically innovation operations. So for those of you who don't know, but are interested in, in this whole innovation management area, which is, in my opinion, it's going to be like like the old 9001 days, you know, when it first came out and stuff, that's where we're at now. We're developing, I'll, I'll show you the, the standards that we're developing. But basically, this is the beginning of an area. Actually, uh, Thomas here is one of our team members in the U.S. team. Uh, thank you for being that, Thomas. And uh, and we have a you know a lot of other people that are that are part of the U.S. team, but the U.S. team is only one of 42 nations that together come to you know, come together. I'm, I'm going to be in Vienna, as a matter of fact, at the end of this of this month, uh, to help to develop that together in a consensus and fashion. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about the measurement trick. We're going to talk today about the series of standards that I mentioned. We're going to talk about indicators and metrics and how to manage them. We're talk about some examples, some potential problems, and then delve into innovation operations processes themselves. So the real management uh, trick, right, the real management of innovation, the trick is to simply maximize value because innovation is value. Most people think that innovation is patents or something new, right? But you know what? If you have a thousand patents, but out of those thousands, thousands of patents, you don't actually commercialize them and put them to use, not necessarily commercialize them, it could be as simple as using them in your own internal processes, then they don't have any value. So they're not innovations, okay? So you gotta measure the value. So the management of innovation can be reduced to maximizing value while minimizing the risk and while minimizing your resources. And how do you know whether you're doing it or not? Well, through a set of, of measurements and management initiatives, not just of the initiatives, but also of the whole portfolio. So you gotta, you gotta look at it from the overall picture. You may be doing great in one particular portfolio, I mean, one particular initiative, but unless you're looking at the whole picture of the whole portfolio, you really don't know if you're truly managing to maximize your value. Understand? That's why it's called managing innovation. How do you manage innovation anyway? Think about it. You know, most people think, what's innovation? Creativity and ideas and everything else. It's not that at all. As a matter of fact, in the old days, I can give you a case study of, of uh, Mitsubishi, for example. Uh, I used to work at Florida Power and Light many, many years ago. I'm not going to say when, but many years ago. 
And uh, Pro Power Line happened to be the first company outside of Japan that won the International Deming Award. Very difficult to do, okay? But we used some Japanese companies to learn from, and Mitsubishi was one of the better ones. And they had a great idea generation uh, for, for uh, process for ideas. And in their process, they would, they would create 14,000 ideas in a year, 14,000. But what would that do? That would force you to then filter those ideas because you know that most of those ideas weren't gonna be any good. Just filter, filter, you know, okay, this one's good. We'll estimate it, we'll select it, we'll do that. So out of the 14,000 ideas, maybe 10 got done. What happened to the other 13,990? What do you think? Nada, right? And what happened to those people that submitted the 13,990? How did they feel? Huh? Quit. How did they feel like quitting, right? They felt like, like they were betrayed. Look at this, I'm submitting all these ideas and nobody's listening to me. So not only were you using all this energy okay, to create the ideas and to then filter them down to the ones that were worth it, but you were also creating animosity within your, your, your staff. So it was working against you. So now we have focused on what we refer to as value-driven innovation. And the biggest difference there is that you don't start with ideas. You don't start until you know what your customer, what your customer needs are, which we all know about, right? From far. What, what is it in, in your competition? How does your business model and your strategy build into it? How do you get that into what it is that you want to create a strategy for innovation for? In other words, what do you want to focus on so that then you have an intent? It is that intent that you want to drive your innovation process. So once you have that intent, now you start coming up with ideas, opportunities, you know, put them together into different concepts, maybe validate the concepts, ah, they don't work very well. Let me go back, get some other ideas. You know, eventually you go ahead and say, okay, these, I'm gonna develop these solutions. I'm gonna de deploy these solutions. This, these five in the center are what we refer to as the operations, innovation operations in ISO 56002. Okay, so they're non-linear. They're non-linear in that they're not sequential. Okay, at any point in time, go back to the beginning. It could be an idea that doesn't work out. It could be an idea that, you know, you wanna work it with something else. So what you, what you end up doing is you need to, you need to look at, you know, the, the overall picture. And I'll, I'll show you that in terms of a portfolio pretty soon. But let's look at the historical relationship so ISO 56002, that's sort of like the, like the mother standard, okay? So that, from that standard, the support, yeah, you know, if anybody who knows anything about 9001, right, the high-level structure, very similar to this, okay? So from the support, we've, we've already developed another standard called 56003, which has to do with innovation partnerships basically open innovation, you know, bringing other people in outside uh, suppliers and so forth. We have uh, since then also developed our vocabulary. So that's a standard. We have taken the evaluation and improvement part of it and created a technical report called 56004 that deals with how do you assess innovation overall, innovation management overall. So uh, once you have that, then we go to the next one, which is looking at your context, which deals with your strategic intelligence management. The next one deals with your operations, which is two of them, 56,007, which is idea management. Okay, basically all the idea management items that I mentioned earlier. And then 56,008, which is the one I happen to be the co-lead internationally also, not just vice chair in, in the US, but also co-lead for the international team that's putting that together. And that tries to address measurements associated with all those other areas, but especially focused on this area here. Lastly, well, not lastly, there's two more to come. Okay, and one is the, the illustrative examples. It wasn't, this wasn't very well explained. So they have to get, you know, what I call, uh, 
vocabulary for dummies, you know. <laughs> and then and then you have fifty six thousand and one, which is going to be the equivalent of nine thousand and one. It will be registrable. It will be auditable. You know, just like just like nine thousand and one is, and uh, that'll be the mother standard eventually. But I don't see fifty six thousand and two going away. I see fifty six thousand and two as as being like a um, like it, like it is a guideline standard that'll lead you to 56,001. But I do see, and for any of your companies that aren't thinking about it, okay, I do see the same requirements that used to exist or still do exist in many cases for for 9,001 from your you know from your suppliers. I'm I'm sorry, from your customers requesting or requiring in some cases that you are certified in 56,001 pension. That's something you should be keeping in the back of your mind. So some of the things to consider. One is your opportunity. You want to work on the opportunities, right? What are, what are the, you want to target the customers. You want to get into ideation. How do you create uh, the, the resources? How do you, you know what? How do you create the competencies in the people? There are actually competencies that can be created for those who want to innovate. Because some people just have it innately, you know, they're born with it, right? They're, or their environment gets it to them, but others don't. So by, by having a methodology by which you can identify the competencies of your overall team, you can identify those who are weak, those who are strong, and you can also identify how to put them together to create a strong team. Eduardo, he's great at the first five competencies. He's great, okay? I'm horrible in the first five, right? But I'm great in the first, in the last three. So together, he and I would make a great team because all eight competencies would, would be would be taken care of. Understand? So there's tools for that and there's there's ways to get that done. And that's all part of this methodology. The selection. So you IDA, you create an opportunity. Now you got to be able to select which one of those you're going to work on. You're not going to work on everything, even though You've already focused it down, right, to just the intent, but not everything is going to be worth working on. Or they might be too risky. You want to implement them and you want to uh, commercialize them. Implementation being the actual development of the solution itself. And then the commercialization is where you actually deploy it out to the marketplace or to your company or whatever. So, what are some of the problems that you face? One, is you, you sometimes you know focus on individual projects only only the individual you don't look at the whole that's a big problem because you don't you're not you're not making decisions that affect everyone you're making individual decisions and think that that applies to everyone sometimes you under or overestimate you and you know measurements tend to um, tend to be broken I guess is what you, to a certain degree in other words people will will mess with the measurements to get the desired result. So you gotta be careful that when you set up the measurements, they are, they are easy to measure and, and objective, okay? That people can't be you know, deciding on, on what it means. Quick example, okay? I remember at, at Flora Power and Light, we used to have uh, the nuclear plants, right? And, and we used to have the, uh, the material, I, I used to be uh, the manager of material management and procurement systems. So at one time we had certain suppliers saying, hey, you know, we, we, get, our, we get our items in on time. No, but you're late, you're late, you're always late. No, I can prove to you that I put it on your dock on such and such a date and I have signatures from your people saying I put it there. You start, you know, trying to find out. And it was a matter of definition. What does late mean, right? What does late mean? What does it mean? It's, the, is it meaning on the dock? Is it meaning after the eight signatures that were required to admit it into inventory? Nuclear plant, okay? So, so it took a long time to get that done. First thing I did is I got rid of five of the eight, okay? But then the other thing was get everybody on the same page. Well, what's the definition? So you have to be able to have a good operational definition of what it is that you're gonna measure. The other one is too much data rather than actually interpreting the data. So uh, you really can't make too many decisions or take action on too many metrics. 
and then overlooking the organization recognition power, as we call it, that you got too many things. We used to call it going after too many rabbits, you know? If I put a rabbit in the, in the center of this room and I tell you guys, hey, go get this rabbit. No, we're gonna grab, we're gonna get the rabbit pretty fast, okay? But if I put 10 rabbits in there and I tell you, go get the rabbits, I don't care how many people are here. It's gonna be very difficult to get the 10 rabbits. If we got too many rabbits, right? It's gonna be very difficult to get them. So you have to focus on those things that are really, really important. Going back to what I showed you before, these are the same circles I had before. You're starting with your intent, identify your opportunities, create concepts, data, concepts, develop solutions, deploy and create value. But you gotta ask yourself why, what, who, when, how, where, and you gotta be able to do it in a, in a very systematic way. So you gotta prepare the measurements, you gotta actually use the measurements and then interpret the outcomes or the outputs to then give you the outputs. Uh, I'm sorry, the outcomes. So you've got to validate in, at the end the intended output to, be, to make sure that you're, that you're getting what you were, you were expecting from the measurement itself. So there's different ways to focus the, the, the measurements. One, we're all very familiar with, right? Context, strategy, culture, those things that are at the high level of the organization, man, many of us, you know, think that's not important, but it really is. Okay? Because if you don't, if you don't have that clear from the beginning, from your leadership all the way down, you're not going to be aligned. People are going to go in different directions, right? And and you're not going to be pulling in the same direction. You're all going to be sometimes even pulling in opposite directions. So it's, it's counterproductive. If you, any any of you uh, went through engineering school, right? You remember the the forces being aligned, and if they're not then you only get a, a cosine of the, of, the, uh, of the amount of force because of the angle and all that stuff. Remember all that? So we got to get it all aligned. That way you get the, the force that you're looking for. Um, the next level is the innovation processes themselves. But then the level after that, which are the next two levels that are super important, are the initiatives and the portfolio. So, once we decided what the, what the intent was, now we're coming up with opportunities and that becomes an initiative as we develop it over time and we start making it you know, fatter and more defined and more refined. And, and you know, it's still not necessarily a project yet, it still might be conceptual, but as it goes through the process, it gets more and more and more understandable what we're trying to do here, right? You try, you get more cost about it. You get more, more of the, of the needed steps. You know what the risks are. So it becomes more and more knowledgeable about it. Well, the way you, the way you, you need to look at it is like, it's sort of like a funnel, but you need to look at it from the point of view of the individual initiatives. So you start off with your context, leadership, planning, support, leading you to your intent. Then each individual, each individual, initiative goes through opportunity concept validation deployment and so forth maybe go back got another one you got another one you got another one this one was started earlier so it started the development process earlier it's, it's at deployment now but guess what this one here we re we recognized along the way we have an opportunity we looked at the concept we tried to validate that concept but it was no good so what do you do? You let it go? Do you continue to put resources into it? Or what would you do? What would you do? Scrap it. Scrap it, right. Now, that's one alternative. How about another alternative? What else could you do? Start, yeah, we're back to the drawing board, right? Okay. What's the other thing? Reframe it. Reframe it, good. Put the way you're so Very good. You could put it together with something else that is happening already. Like for example, let's say that, that this one here, we're gonna scrap it, right? But instead of just scrapping it, we're gonna combine it with this one, or maybe with this one that's just getting started because it makes sense. Let's not throw it away necessarily, but let's learn from what we, from what we have. Now, there are many cases that you will scrap it, okay? But here's the thing. Don't just throw it away. Now, stick it in your knowledge management database so that the next time around that somebody comes up with that idea, 
you know what you did with it, why you did it, right? And you don't have to repeat that process again, all right? So you know what went wrong or what could have been done better. And you can now say, okay, yeah, it makes sense that it goes in here and not where it was before. If the time was too early, maybe, you know, maybe now it's time for it. I've had a lot of those situations myself, okay? I'm always too early. But anyway, the, the, the idea is that you manage these initiatives along the way to cut off as quickly as possible your resources so you can redeploy them somewhere else and you can minimize your risk at the same time. And what are you doing? You're maximizing the overall value of that portfolio. So, so rather than just thinking of it as, as just individual initiatives that I need to manage, I need to manage that whole portfolio. So when you're, when you're measuring, you have to measure everything. You can't just measure you know, individual, individual uh, ideas. So you can develop some scorecards like for innovation portfolios, you could have value outcomes, innovation solution, innovation solution outcomes, uh, or measurements, I'm sorry, organizational resource measurements, leadership measurements. You can even put them together. Like in this case here, you could create an index, an innovation relevance index, an innovation enabling index, right? Management loves indices. Okay? They don't like to look at the individual, but, they don't mind having the index. The index then brings up the flag. Hey, I've got a problem. Now let's go deeper into it. You have gotta have both levels, okay? One to flag it and one to then, you know, more deeply analyze it. So I'm gonna do an exercise with you guys. What I want you to do is I want you to think about open innovation, okay? You all, you all know what open innovation is? Give me some definitions. The external ideas, especially, but it's both. You're absolutely right. Open innovation means you're not going to restrict it only to your own to, to your internal ideas. So when you're when you're opening it up, you're opening it up not only to your own departments and other departments in your in your organization, but you're going to open it up to experts. You're going to open it up to your suppliers. You're going to open it up. Depends on how far you want to go. You could open it up to the world if you wanted to. I would don't recommend that. Okay. You probably want to control who it is that you want to take information from. Plus, they may not want to work with you. So you got to, you know, put your, put your parameters around it, right? So think about what are the objectives in your head? What are, the, what are you trying to achieve in open innovation such that then we could measure it? So let's, let's come up with. Um, some ideas that you have, I'll put them up as, uh, you know, as you tell me. So go ahead and give me some ideas. Anybody, what would you want to measure? What, what is, think of the outcome and think about what you want as an outcome. What would you want to measure? Or it could be process, you know, things that you want to measure of the open innovation process that will keep it in line for you. Anybody, what would you measure? So profit. We've got one online. All right. Uh, on time documents, periodic reviews. Anyway, I, I can continue. Let me let me show you what some of the, and, and some of those are good, okay? But you got to think about really what are you trying to achieve with open innovation? Is it you know, the typical stuff? Cycle time is, I think, is important, okay? And maybe eventually customer sat, right? Because eventually you want, you're always going to do something for customer sat. Error reduction in terms of managing an open innovation, what would you, you know, what errors are you going to have there? The ones that are being reported by the customer that you're trying to satisfy. Right. So if there's an error in the system. Okay. Okay. All right. Profit always, right? Eventually you want some profit, hopefully. Uh, maybe reduce risk. So here's some things to consider. Okay. If you're going to look at it from a like a process point of view, first you want to define. Well, what do you want to define? What is your objective? Why, you know, why have you decided to use open innovation in the first place? There's many ways to do innovation. So first of all, you know, set it up for your definition. What do you want? To, what do you, what is that you're looking for? How successful, you know, would you know if you are? How would you know if you're successful? What are you going to measure? 
okay? The, the idea acceptance ratio, yeah, of all the ideas that they come up with, you know, what's the acceptance ratio? Maybe, maybe you could have done a better job defining what it is you wanted, to, you know, the intent of it and so forth, so that the idea that they do generate are good ideas and you can accept them. The, the idea contribution rate. So I would love to see more, you know, more participation from the people that are, that are doing the open innovation, right? Uh, market share, profits, number of completed projects, right? Resources used versus planned. Did you hit the, 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 the cycle time, right? Uh, deadline and so forth. And then you gotta analyze that information and then you gotta learn from it. So what went right? What could have done, what could have been done better? And then, and then as we were talking about earlier is feed to and from your knowledge management. Knowledge management. Most people don't talk about it. By the way, did you know that there's a knowledge management standard? How many know that? Anybody know? I didn't know it until recently. Okay. There's a new knowledge management standard. Okay, take a look at it. It's not great. Okay. It probably, it probably needs it. Probably an innovation idea. Yes. Actually, what I'd love to see is to incorporate it into the new 56,001. Because that's really where it belongs. Okay, we're definitely going to refer to it, but it is weak, so it, we may need to, you know, strengthen it up a bit. Okay, like it doesn't talk about some of this stuff, some of the stuff that you learn through the innovation process. Of course, you got to put it into a knowledge management database. It becomes the beginning for the next time around. Otherwise, you lose. It. And by the way, knowledge management is very difficult to do. <laughs> Just, just in case you don't know, haven't realized it. All right, so some of the benefits, higher measurable returns, enhanced competitive position, better revenue growth, uh, improved uh, use of limited resources, improve uh, or reduce risks of investment. Remember, very simple, right? Max, what? Max, what? Value. Come on, if you, just, if, if you just leave this presentation today with just this one concept, very simple. Maximize, Value. minimize, risk, and, and resources, correct? Through measure of what you're doing. So very simple, right? Maximize ma the value and while you're minimizing risk and minimizing your resources and knowing that you're doing it by managing your, in your initiatives and your portfolio. That's managing innovation. If you, you know, if you take that away, that's, that's it. It's all in a nutshell. Okay, everything else is a 38 page standard, okay, that you can get into the details of if you want. Okay, uh, before I go, I do want to do a little pitch for IAYP. It's not a competitor at all to ASQ. ASQ actually has an innovation division, which you're also welcome to be a, a member of. It's for free, okay, the innovation division in ASQ. We have free memberships of associate memberships in IOIP. You go to IOIP.org, become a free member, or you can be a professional member where you do pay $200 a year, okay? More or less, what, a little bit less, I guess a little more than ASQ does right now, okay? But well worth it, okay? You're a member, I think you can say that. And, uh, well, I'm the CEO, so of course I can say that, okay? And, and uh, we'd love to have you. You know, we'd love to have you. We're trying to get a bigger, you know, a bigger um, set of people interested in innovation. Right now we have over 3,000 people in the IOIP. So it's time to get in, all right? Any questions? Anybody have any questions for me? I've got a question for you. Okay, go. About innovation. So um, many people don't consider innovation in a structured way like you're talking about they just they, they take, think about it very random you know oh so and so had an idea let's do something Sorry, with that, that. yeah uh, so what do you how do you get people um to to understand the fact that it is structured it is a process to innovation well there's a lot of there's a lot of uh you know change management necessary in this whole process um you know people have to realize that First of all, the United States, just in general, just so you know, we used to be in the top 10. We used to be number one 
in, in the competitive index with uh, Bloomberg, guess what? We're no longer in the top 10. We're no longer in the top 10, ladies and gentlemen. That is embarrassing. It's uh, Singapore, um, South Korea, uh, and then some of the uh, North European countries like, uh, like uh, Sweden. Yeah, uh, Norway, uh, Switzerland, I believe. Um, Israel is doing very well. Yeah. Israel is doing very well, very strong, and Germany. The reason I asked Japan was like years back, I was working for a Japanese company. They were paying $100, back then it was middle 90s, to every employee who submits the ID. $100 yeah. just for submission. Right. That's how they get your idea generation of course, of course. in order to go. Yeah. And, and that was the problem, right? That was the mistake. The mistake was to get all these ideas and then you get people upset at you. You know, plus you're wasting all this time. That happened at FBI. We used to, we, we, we created a, what we called the Bright Ideas Program. We got a lot of bright ideas. Which was wasted. But they were wasted. You know, most of them weren't worth anything, unfortunately. Yes. Another question for you. What? Uh, how is your relationship with digital and innovation and the possibility of holding a path on those? One of the uh, standards that we've come up with is for intellectual property, okay? So there is a definite link between the two. Uh, the intellectual property standard, I believe, and this is not official yet, but I believe there's gonna be a, a newer version, more robust version coming out, okay? Well, being developed, not coming out. It takes about three years to develop them. Um, but, uh, but it's a good point, they are totally linked, okay? And the other thing they're linked to is that, that uh, any IP needs to be linked to that knowledge management again, right? Your knowledge management database needs to include technology inventory, needs to include um, best practices, needs to include process information, needs to include what went right, what went wrong, needs to include, uh, you know, benchmark stuff, you know? It, it needs to, it, it's, that's what it is, knowledge, right? And you need to be able to access it. And the more, the, the better that we are now with our cloud stuff, okay, that we have available to us, knowledge management should be a breeze. But guess what? Knowledge management that doesn't get updated is, it's, it's a waste, okay? So, so you've got to create the system, but then you have to update that system. So, the best, so the, what people are working on now is how to create the system, but then how to make the update more automatic so that when things happen, it updates. Understand? So you don't have to rely on people to update it. And much of the AI stuff, think about it. Much of the AI stuff, machine learning and so forth, what is it? Nothing much, nothing more than a, uh, a cycle that's building you know, the machine is going in and, and trying different things and if things don't work, then they eliminate that and they go, you know, try something else. That's what AI is. You know, eventually you get the right, you get the right uh, method and that's what you continue to improve and improve based on results. Well, that's knowledge management. It's all, it's all coming together, okay? Through different paths. At least that's what I see. And think about this, the other connection that I see, okay, is 56,002, or a one eventually, connecting to 9,001 and vice versa. I think that the, the companies that currently have ISO 9001 certification are prime, prime to get certified in 56,002 and eventually in one, okay? Because they've got a third of it done with the high level structure. Understand? Yeah. It's a matter of focusing, instead of focusing just on quality, focusing on quality and innovation. So now you build on what you had in quality to get your innovation, rather than start from scratch, like we had to, right? In 9001, start from scratch. But now we have that. So it's a matter of just building on it. But here's the other connection. Once we have an innovation and we've 
taken that innovation all the way through to the end where now we have commercialized it or implemented, deployed it, right? Now, guess what? What do you have to do? You gotta make sure it keeps on working, right? Where does that go? Where do you think that goes? Where would it go? Come on, the quality. Because now you have the process. So now you stick it back into quality to make sure that it keeps on going well. And you know, continuous improvement, incremental improvement, it's fine. So there's that circle, I see it at least, you know, that we're building where we're starting with 9,001, we build to 56,001. When we, we come up with innovations, we bring it back over 9,001 to continue to, you know, continue to maintain it, control it, right? And then we bring it back to, you know, and, and, and minor improvement. And then as, as you manage innovation, you come up with a sustainable periodic set of innovations. And that's what's gonna keep us alive. Listen, if we don't have a sustain, to be sustainable for a company now, to be sustainable, to be around for the next 25 years, think about how many companies existed that are big today that existed 25 years ago. Very few, if any, okay? Maybe IBM or something like that, you know? Very few, okay? So for, us, for those companies to stay sustainable, sustainable meaning, you know, I'm gonna be around and be successful. We must be resilient and we, mu we must be able to act quickly and we must be able to innovate. Thank you.